the people that are saying that money can buy happiness or you know I don't want to be rich I just want to be happy you know it's, it's very important for you to understand it's not just about you that's just a fact like if you cannot provide for your people but you have the ability to provide for your people that's your fault how are you gonna feel that you knew you could have the opportunity to help them but you your ego selfish ego told you no nah, I'm good like that and now you can provide for the people around you whilst you could I think that's selfish, to be very honest. Hey, my name is Danny Balogun. I'm an entrepreneur. An investor. I have a company, Sulex International, a company in sustainable housing, and uh, I own multiple investment portfolios for people coming from Europe and America uh, to invest in Africa. So I started doing business in 2012. Prior to that, I was in the army um, several years, the Dutch paratroopers in the Netherlands. I got involved in a sales company, ACN, direct sales company in the Netherlands. I didn't have any experience in business so far. They didn't have any experience in doing sales, but I was just eager to learn and to develop myself financially. Because the, the military developed myself physically, I could develop myself physically, I could develop myself mentally, but I couldn't develop myself financially. And that's actually what I was looking for as well, because I needed freedom more than everything else at that particular moment, because I didn't have any freedom at all. But by that time, I joined ACN, and I basically got involved more in sales, and I got to know a lot of people from different backgrounds, people with different types of success. I could learn from people. I saw truck drivers, I saw teachers, you know, having amazing amounts of success. Zero money, zero knowledge about doing business. So I could easily relate to those people. And because of, I was being very coachable at the beginning. And that part has to do with the fact that I didn't know anything about business. So I was just very coachable. I put my trust and my faith in someone who was already wealthy. Because if I had put it in myself, I couldn't get things done. That's easy mathematics. So from that moment, I started to you know, get some customers and I started to get some success. I was 22, 23 at, the, at that moment. And I actually could quit my job in the army six months after I started earning um, five figures in a month. And that's the moment when life is going to try you out. Like, you know, if your finances are here, like your personal development is here, your finance will come back to your personal level of development. And that really hit me hard at that time. So I was making money at a very young age. You know, I bought a new car, paid it off directly, you know, got a new house. I was making good money, but I was spending more than I was making with the arrogance that I could make more money because I was feeling myself and I thought I was on the top of the line. But again, Life hits you and you just come back to reality. That was the first lesson of being humble. <laughs> that was the moment that I got advised by my mentor to uh, get a budget coach. And that budget coach actually changed my way of looking to finances. And I think it's very important for people to know if you know you are not good with money or if you know you're not good with anything in life, get someone close to you who is actually good in all those things. That's the first lesson I've learned in doing business and gathering the right people around me. So when I was 23, I got my budget coach and I was living on a budget. You know, I was making 20, 30K a month and I was having a budget coach who actually told me, you're not allowed to make this choice, get this shoes, buy this. You know, I was buying Louis Vuitton, Gucci, new watches and all that. Uh, but at the same time, I had bills to pay, you know, you know, and I had people around me who were still earning a nine to five and suffering. And so it, it wasn't making sense at that moment, you know, save money, but also how to put the money aside. And that's when I really started to get to know the value of money, because the moment you don't know the value of, let's say, 50 euros, that's the moment you should realize that you should get someone, you should get, you should get help, you should get someone who can actually bring you back to your feet. And then in 2013, I became regional vice president, one of the first black regional vice presidents in Europe. I felt amazing in that period of time. I think I did it in 16 months, less than 16 months, from the moment I started earning 
average income to 1300 euros a month till earning six figures every year almost seven figures at one point so it was a huge change in finances in a very short period of time and that can only go the right way if you have the right people around you so i made a lot of mistakes with money but also with you know i lost friends most of the time because of my own arrogance as well i had issues within your relationships because you know that moment you got some attention you know you go out you know you spent money like it's water you're gonna feel yourself big time so you yeah, had some uh, some obstacles with, with women as well i'm not very proud of but that actually had to make me the person i am today because to understand what you really have and what you value in life so all those steps actually made me realize that you know sometimes in life you have to go through all those wins and losses and maybe even a short period of time to get to the point um, life really wants to get you I also started investing a lot in seminars. You know, I went to several seminars, Anthony Robbins, you know, Les Brown, Robert Kiyosaki, you know, I invested a lot. Now they understand, right? Now it's very cool to put, you know, to, to post quotes on the internet. Well, like, hey, if you, if, you, if you can go to the door, go to the window, you know, those type of quotes, like, it doesn't make sense. But at that time, I was, I was 23, 24, so I was already investing a lot in, in, in personal development. And that actually still, helps me standing and still help me make the right decisions and choices in life. I started investing, you know, when you have a lot of money, um, you make a lot of money, a lot of people, you know, with ideas will come to will approach you. Have I learned a lot in that period of time? Yeah, I've learned a lot as well. You know, I'm still waiting for that guy I've invested money in and I didn't wrote an NDA or any contract, just in good faith, you know, just transfer it. So I want to that guy and he's still to be found. <laughs> so I made some mistakes as well, you know. You know, sometimes you learn, sometimes you earn. And when I um, started doing more, I, I gained more knowledge, I gained more experience, and I get to know uh, more people who actually could teach me. It's easy to get to a million. If you wanna gain 10 million, for instance, you have to speak with someone who actually has done it already. And I got in those circles, people that are actually approaching you, are pulling you up. And it's funny because the difference between someone in your own environment where you grew up with, you speak about, I want to get rich. They're laughing at your face and like, hey, they'll act normal, you know? Just like, you know, it's, this is life. We're not made to make millions in life. But when you tell a rich dude or a wealthy guy, like, hey, I want to get rich, they'll tap you on the shoulder and tell you like, hey, yeah, of course, yeah, that's, I love the energy. The self-made millionaires I'm talking about right now, they know how to be, you know, to start from, 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 from nowhere, from somewhere and actually get to the point where they are right now. So it's very important to, again, have the right people. Peer group, something that I've learned. Because having the people around you can determine the path in your life. Like, are you going to um, surround yourself with people who are only talking about going out or only talking about ladies they're planning their saturday evenings better than planning their future i think you shouldn't hang around with those people too much if you are having people around you who are talking about dividends investing in stocks strategies around tax and which country you should set up a, a company which bank account you set up like where should i get your cryptocurrencies why should i do my investment why should i buy land then you know you're in the right circle and that's what i've learned i think in the past six years getting the right people at the right point in your life? I think that's a question you should ask my old classmates. I was always active. I was always around the middle point of attention. I was a problem solver. Whether I was sitting in the front of the class or in the back of the class, things were always happening around me. That's the type of person I was. As I mentioned before, I was always looking for more excitement. I was a very adventurous, I still am, adventurous person. Do I see that in the person I am right now? Definitely. Let's always say the best room to be in is in the room of imp improvement, right? And that's actually what I've always been up to. Daily work to get things like this done is discipline. Discipline, clarity in what you want to achieve. And as I mentioned before, I was always committed to get the best out of myself, you know, to create general wealth for me and my family. I was always focused on being a better me, a better version of myself. What we had in the army was a daily medal of action. So basically it's a routine, how you start a day and how you end the day and how you plan for the next day. Um, as I mentioned before as well, is you know, um, if you fail to plan, you plan to fail, right? 
as I mentioned, you start your day because you already have planned something the day before. Start with a workout, some type of meditation. I'm the type of guy, I'm always in my phone. So I always see like what's happening, you know, check my email, speak to the staff, my partners. I'm actually always about opportunities. I'm always working so I can actually get productive to get more sales uh, during the day. That's basically what I always keep doing during the day. I'm always active, always on the internet, and always running my business. I don't believe when you have a business, when you have a company, when you run a company, that you work nine to five. Am I actively working um, 24 seven? No. Am I always working physically? Maybe not. Mentally, always. I actually read How to Win Friends and Influence People, Dale Carnegie. And I've learned a lot from that book because it actually said that, you know, you have to invest a lot in the people around you. That's what, what, I, what I've done in the past couple of years. So it could be, it would be easier for me right now to approach people when it comes to, you know, gaining clients. So what I've done is create an environment, a winning environment around me, around me and my businesses. So whenever I just put something out in terms of um, I'm starting a new real estate project or I'm getting um, a new plot next to the beach, for instance, it's going to be easy for me to attract those people because they already know like what my track record is in the past couple of years in businesses, right? Does it make sense? How you could easily get your clients is to invest a lot in your people skills. That's one of the things I haven't really heard a lot when I was actually growing my skills in sales. I think it's a fundamental aspect of really um, getting success, especially in acquiring customers. One of my mentors once said like, hey, if you don't love what you do, then you should better quit your job or quit your business. If you don't find fun in what you're doing, then you're doing it the wrong way. I meet a lot of people. I meet a lot of people. And as I said before, I invest a lot in my surroundings, which means that, you know, I'm, I'm getting better at meeting people. And once you meet a lot of people, you get to know a lot of stories. You know how kind of stories can be like. People can come up with some funny stories. I enjoy having a, a, a meeting, a business meeting afterwards, having a drink with that same person and speak about life, speak about different perspectives, speak about opinion, opinions, speak about things that are happening. That's how actually I enjoy it. I enjoy going to the beach every Sunday with my children. I enjoy listening music. I enjoy, you know, sports. Everything what you do, find some enjoyment in it. I think that keeps you balanced in life. I don't know anything. The more I get to know, the more I know I don't know anything. I'm very eager so I can get a lot of things done. That's what I know and I'm very aware about that. Outer factors, people that I see around me who achieve things, not only materialistic but also like you know, in a spiritual way and I'm seeing them doing very well. That inspires me to get the best out of myself as well. My family inspires me a lot because that actually makes me think like, hey, I'm alive. I'm the caretaker of the house. I have to make sure that, you know, everything what I do, that they're going to like take it and you know, implement themselves, you know, because I'm talking about generational wealth. It's not only money, it's also like the principles you're giving to them. So a lot of things actually inspired me. My missus, for instance, right, you know, she's a great individual. The way she saw children, for instance, it's, it's, it inspires me a lot as well. See how much love, you know, someone can give to someone else. So a lot of things actually inspired me you know, in different areas of life a lot of people. I'm a smart guy and I know I can get a lot of things done. But I'm also smart enough to know that I don't know a lot of stuff. The more I know, the more I actually find out that I don't know a lot. Gathering the right people around me, the right people around you. People with expertise, you know, people with more skills than I have. If you just create a mastermind group around you with all those people, with all those expertise in your vision, that's when you're gonna win big time. I've learned a lot in terms of failure, the higher your expectations, the higher disappointments. So always keep your expectations balanced. Not one line, because then you're dead, but at least no balance. When you're happy, when things are going well, just be happy for it, but not just too excited. When things are becoming very ugly, I would say, you know, you can mourn about it, but just for a small period of time because after rain comes sunshine, right? And I truly believe in, 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 in the seasons. Like, as I said, after rain comes sunshine, after winter comes summer, and after summer comes winter. That's basically how I always work. So for me, it's quite important to keep your emotions balanced. That's what I've learned the past 10 years doing business. How Sulek started, it's very funny because that was the same trip I was in Nigeria when I just looked around and I found some points, the, the housing deficit, for instance, electricity, water. So based on that, and I knew the Netherlands, they are investing a lot in solar and investing a lot in durability, right? So that moment I knew that, hey, I can do something to combine everything together. 
So I went back, wrote a plan. I think to wrote my business plan in one night, coming back, booked my flight ticket, went back to Nigeria, built a medical center with a team. I had a lot of obstacles during my journey <laughs> in Nigeria, uh, but that's part of the game, right? I went back, I told my sister, I need a name <laughs> for my company, because I was doing all those investments, but I didn't have a name. I think within two minutes, or even two more, one minute, came up with a name, said Sulex. Sustainable Living Experience. It's my sister that came up with the name. And that's the moment that I started formalizing my business more. Like, okay, how am I gonna do it? How am I going to, you know, gather a team around me? I didn't have a background in the world at that time. I didn't have a background in engineering. I, I'm not an architect. I didn't have a medical background. I didn't have experience in all of these things. I just had the right people around me. I just recruited the right people around me. I created a mastermind team to get things done. I was interviewed and recruited by an organization, the Black Male Achievers in the Netherlands. It was in 2018. It went quite viral in the Netherlands. Uh, it showcased the black investors and CEOs as role models. That was very needed at that time in Holland because they don't really showcase black expertise in the Netherlands. So that photo actually went very viral in Holland. And because of that, I got to speak with a lot of people, also in the government, and I got invited to, you know, to come to Curaçao. Um, Curaçao is one of Dutch colonized islands. I got a deal done with the government um, to build um, houses, uh, hundreds of houses, sustainable houses, Caribbean, because also there they have a housing deficit. So right now, as we speak, we're building several houses for the social industry there. The first house finalized a couple of weeks ago, final months ago, sorry. We have some projects going on in Netherlands as well, which you might know already, you've seen some things on my, uh, on my social media. With bungalows, that also is going very, very well right now. And we just anticipated on the market, because we saw with the lockdown, people had a lot of restrictions in terms of traveling. We approached some bungalow parks, and as I thought already, they were short of a lot of bungalows. So I just rapidly built some bungalows with a team. We sold a lot of bungalows <laughs> in uh, a few months. It, it just came from one another, from Nigeria to the Caribbean, from the Caribbean to Holland. And right now in Ghana, you know, doing a lot of things, different areas in, uh, in Ghana, buying land, developing, you know, our beach houses on the land, encouraging and inspiring people from the diaspora to come back and see what the opportunities are. Not only real estate, but also in different areas, from agriculture to tech, different areas we are trying to get people involved in. So yeah, that's basically my story of <laughs> Stulex. Why Africa? To be very honest, I was inspired by Naomi to come to Africa. The funny thing about me is I have an indestructible mindset. As I mentioned earlier before, I committed myself, you know, to get the best out of myself. So probably with that indestructible mindset, I knew everything, you know, just put me anywhere in the world and I'd run the bag up. You can be naive because the economy, the world we live in right now is very manipulative. So things can happen. And before you know, you lost everything, right? By just choice of few people that make you cannot achieve or you know, succeed, whatever you want to do. And I actually find myself in that position when I was you know, handling business in Holland. You know, I felt at one point that I was giving so much to the country. As I mentioned before, I was in the army, so I contributed with my life. My money, driving a nice car, you know, living in a nice penthouse in the Netherlands. I basically had everything, but at the same time, I still felt that it wasn't good enough in the Netherlands. The way some people look at you when you drive a car, the questions you're gonna ask when you live in a, in a certain type of house. Always the fight battle between your acceptance and tolerance, you know, as a black individual. And it's not only in the Netherlands, you know, we are, we are experiencing worldwide right now. Done a lot of things in the Netherlands, in terms of business and everything. At one point, you just realize, hey, I have choices. And for me, it's always about choices, having choices, you know, no boundaries. At one point, we decided to go to, to Ghana, it was in 2017. We sat down in Tema. I remember like the day of yesterday. I had a cold beer with my father-in-law, and he said like, hey, why don't you just invest your money in Africa rather than in Holland? Because you've done a lot of things already. You invest a lot of in startups and a lot of other properties. Why don't you just start something in Africa? You know, at the end of the day, that's home. If you start something here, you plant your seed, you give an opportunity for your next generation to choose where they want to live in Africa or in Europe. And that actually made me think. And after that trip in 2017, I asked for Naomi's hand. That's the first seat was planted. I came back a few weeks later and I, I started my first business. You know, I built a medical center in Nigeria in 2018 to contribute to the area in Oakland State. 
Uh, it was an amazing, amazing event. It could help a lot of people over there. You know, it was in an area where there was no medical services around. I did a good job. The feeling I had after doing that, I knew from that moment that, hey, I'm home and I have to do more and I can do so much more with the expertise, the experience and the resources I have. Invest in the right people. <laughs> That's just one of the things. Invest in the right people because at the end of the day, you're going to need them. I don't really believe, you know, I don't trust anyone and all that, you know, I don't believe in that because, you know, what are you going to do on your own? It's not a one-man team, you know, running a business, you can't do it on your own. You have to trust someone at one point. So again, I'm a people's person. I invest a lot in my surroundings and got the right people around me. So what I have, for instance, Nigeria and, you know, Nigeria, you know, I'm, I'm Nigerian, I'm from Nigeria, so I know where I'm talking about. But even me, as someone who grew up in the Netherlands, I got some uppercuts <laughs> whilst building my medical center in Nigeria. Maybe I was, I was naive as well, but do I blame the people during the obstacles? No. Everyone is trying to hustle. Everyone is trying to make money. Everyone is trying to, you know, survive, take care of the family. Obviously, I'm not talking about the people that are doing harm. I'm just talking about people that you know, are just trying to make things look better than it is to get some money out of it. What I will tell people is work with people with a good track record. So just invest in, in, in research. You do, do your due diligence about people. Do I work with referrals? Not always, because they can be biased as well. I just want to see track records of what you have done and the people who have worked with you. Once I've seen that, then I know whether I can work with you or not. That's one, get someone on the team. So what I will do in Holland, I wouldn't do, for instance, in, in, in Nigeria and Ghana. What I'll do in Nigeria and Ghana, I wouldn't do in the Caribbean. So those are the differences that I had to cope with in the beginning. That was an obstacle as well. But also at the same time, it's an opportunity because all those differences, for instance, they are connected to each other through diaspora, people from African heritage, people in the Caribbean, people from, from Europe. And that's where I see the opportunity in right now. So that obstacle made me realize that, hey, if I have this obstacle right now, I'm 100% sure that people in the next couple of years that will come and invest in Africa will definitely have the same obstacles. So that's an opportunity. So what are you going to do? Are you going to see how they run into the trap, how they run into the obstacles? Or are you going to make sure you provide a platform where you can help them get rid of all those obstacles and give them a safe launch of the business? So there are always opportunities. Where there is rain, there's a rainbow. I'm always hungry and I always tell people that I'm never thirsty, I'm always hungry. I had this mentality when I first started the business, the mentality of I hustle to feed, not to eat. So it's a bigger picture, if you get what I mean. So I basically work for my legacy, for my last name. That's where I work for. I work for the bigger picture. I want people, you know, when I'm not, when there is no Danny anymore, there's still Balagoon, right? That's still my last name. I want my grandchildren to have a picture of me in their living room. Like, hey, there was our grand, 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 granddad. And they'll tell stories about like how, how, what, I, what I've done and what, how, how I could provide for my family. And they're still like eating the fruits from that. Yeah, it's true that I can just retire right now and do my stuff and just chill. But I'm not fulfilled yet. I'm, I'm grateful, always. I'm very grateful. But I feel like I didn't reach my full potential yet. And it actually keeps me going. It keeps me going every day. Every day I just stand up with this kind of urgency like, hey. Like, I need to make it, I need to make it, I need to make it. And, and, it's, and sometimes it frustrates the people around me because I'm, 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 always, I'm always busy and I have to find a, you know, a right balance, obviously. Because of that, I always see opportunities, even before the opportunities really appear, it's like an opportunity, right? So I'm always busy. So when I wake up in the morning, and obviously I have a DMO, daily method of, of action, so I actually have my day planned a day before. It's very important to have this mindset of I can get anything done. Like in the morning, obviously you have your day planned, but you know by the end of the day I'm fulfilled because I have got a new deal, for instance. I've got the results I want. I'm always excited to meet new people. So when I go out, I always go out fresh because the opportunity can pop up just like this. And it's only, only one time you have a good impression, right? So it's very important that I always play my A game. I saw, I think, a quote on Facebook about uh, Zidane, you know, the, the Real Madrid coach, right? Like, you know, Zidane plays every game like it's the Champions League final. I think that really resonates with who I am as a person. Like, and that actually keeps me going. That keeps me going. Again, the right people. <laughs> It all comes down to peer group. It's not a one-man army. I don't believe in that. I'm so blessed that I have the right people around me. And my friends and my people around me, they know exactly how grateful I am for them. And I'll always be grateful for them because they took me 
every step in life to the person I'm right now and I'm able to teach a lot of people my expertise and my experience and I'm seeing several people who I have mentored and coached getting successes, earning millions, doing their, you know, their thing, having businesses. It's good to see that I had the stake and I'm very proud of it, like, you know, I could be part of their success story as well. But then again, it all comes down to what I said, having the right people around you. The reason why I am where I am right now today is that I invested a lot in getting the people around me and, and, and more important, keep the people around you as well. I think there's a big difference in getting the people around you and keeping the people around you. I got the people around me. They showed me, for instance, the real estate market. They showed me how you could get real estate without money, for instance. You know, we spoke about OPM as well, right? So do I think it's mandatory to have money to invest in something? No, there are a lot of ways. And you have to be creative and you have to be smart around it. But how do you know those ways? By knowing the right people, right? Be coachable. And when I mean coachable, I mean very coachable, as in like, take my life. And I know it can be hard to do that, but what I've learned doing the same things every day, but expecting different results is insanity. If you know that you always earn an average income, your way of your thinking, the, the way you, 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 you move yourself around things. You cannot use that same path to get from four figures to five figures. What got you here won't get you there. What got you there won't get you there. So you always have to elevate to get to the next position in life. You just learn that you even have to fire your mentors because some people can take you to a certain level where they have been themselves. But above that, you have to find people that have done better than that. So even you, you have to be sharp. At what point do you have to get another mentor, get people around you, get the right people around you? So if you have an environment and they keep blocking you of growing, then you should get a new environment. I know it can be hard. What I just did is that I, I think it was my 23rd birthday. I just had a, a big B-Day bash. I invited everyone. I think it's on YouTube, right? I invited everyone. I invited people I grew up with when I was doing my hostels on the street. I invited people from the army. I invited people in my new business. I invited people where I was, you know, doing other stuff with, you know, my other business and all that. So I invited everyone and everyone was there. It was, I think it was one of the biggest parties in Rotterdam. People knew about that party. That was the moment that I told everyone like, hey guys, started from the bottom. I always say, guys, like, hey, I came from nothing, but I'm coming from everything. If you guys want to grow with me, you can grow with me, but don't stand in my way because, you know, I'm going to get rid of you. And that's the moment that people actually really got respect for me, like, hey, you know, Danny is always putting people on. If we are blocking his growth, get rid and just, you know, leave him and doing all, let him do his own stuff. Because that's actually what I was very direct in. I was very, 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 very direct in my communication. That was, I think, one of the moments that I really set the tone of getting the right people. Ever since then, I just started getting rid of my money in a positive way and in a strategic way. As in like, you know, put your money, let your money work for you. Because again, people are scared to invest, but if you don't invest, how are you going to get money? Because we know how manipulative the economy can be. Where in one day, two days, three days, money can be gone like that. Because one of two choices from people higher up. And then what? So personally, I'm always thinking about tactics and strategies, how to invest my money, how to get the best out of my money, and always let my money making babies. The people that are saying that money can buy happiness or, you know, I don't want to be rich, I just want to be happy, you know. It's very important for you to understand it's not just about you. <laughs> That's just a fact. Like, if you cannot provide for your people, but you have the ability to provide for your people, that's your fault. How are you going to feel that you knew you could have the opportunity to help them, but you, your ego, selfish ego, told you, no, nah, I'm good like that. And now you can't provide for the people around you. Whilst you could. I think that's selfish, to be very honest. And the people who are saying that, and they never achieved that type of money to say that. I'd rather be rich and have choices whether to be broke than to be broke and not having a choice to be rich. Doesn't make sense for me, if you get what I mean. But never let money control you. So I always work for a purpose rather than I work for money. I think that's the way you should navigate yourself through life. What I see right now is the reason why people don't invest is that people, they don't know how to invest. They don't have to know how, they don't know how to deal with money. Actually, they don't know how to make money. They don't know how to save money or keep money and they definitely don't know how to multiply money. I speak a lot about financial literacy. At that moment, when I started running my business, I didn't have that experience. And I, and I had a mentor again, like I had people around me 
who taught me that. But they were just like, hey, I'm going to mentor you one by one. I'm going to teach you what I know exactly. And I just gathered everything around me. So the person you're seeing right now is just a mixture of seminars I've invested in, the people that have coached me, you know, the experiences I had. What's the, the number one reason why people want to go in business? Say it's money. Okay, well, what's the number one reason why people won't go into business? Probably money. The reason why you get into business shouldn't be the reason why you shouldn't go into business. That's basically what it is. If you never try, you never win. And that's basically because I've spoken to thousands of people during the 10 years of doing business and speaking on stages. And people always come with obstacles like, I can't do this, I can't do that. And when you ask them, have you tried it before? They even stopped, they even quit it before, before trying. And that's actually how I've got the things I have right now, by just trying it. The battle was actually already lost. I had 0.0000001 chance. I knew I'm gonna take that 0.0001 chance and I'll make it happen. I just tried it. If you never try, you never win. Well, one of the moments I had is, I remember that as the day yesterday. I think it was 2012. I came home to a lot of packages from, not even, it's not even a letter, it's a package, a whole package, like governmental, when you, you know, when you have bills and you haven't paid them in several months in a row, then they come with a whole package and it has these huge letters like, open right now so that was one of the moments that i knew like i i'm screwed up and i had like several of those packages not even letters packages you know we're gonna turn off your gas we're gonna turn off you know your electricity and that was the moment that i was like hey i'm 20 years of age my choices in the past six months have brought me exactly the point i'm right i'm in right now if i'm gonna keep doing the same things in the next six months in the next six years I'm gonna get exactly the same results. And I think that's the moment that I really realized, like, hey, I can't live like this anymore. Showing the good side of life to people, but when I come home, it's a big mess. I'm gonna like change things right now. I'm gonna be committed to get generational wealth for myself, also for my family around me. That's the thing about me. I had the right people around me, but I didn't use the right people around me. That particular moment, I knew that I had to get a mentor. I had to trust someone. I had to put my faith in someone else where he had the things I really wanted to have in life. I basically followed that person, that individual, blindly. If I'm gonna put my trust in myself, I wanna get things done. So I have to learn from someone who actually had those things done already. That's when I actually started with my DMO, Daily Method of Action. I started to write a new vision board, you know, what I wanted to achieve. I started to work out again. Started with a plan, the wheel of life. And when you start with sports, you know, you feel yourself better, you know, you have a better feeling yourself physically. And from that, emotionally, you're gonna feel better as well. From emotionally, mentally, you're gonna feel stronger. So all those things. And when you feel better as well, that's the moment when opportunities will come. And then you have to make sure that you're ready for opportunities. I want to be remembered as the guy. People with no money, people with no experience, people with no network, people with no time, people who think they can do it. All those excuses are exactly the reasons why I personally decided to do it. And I think that's what I want to be remembered for, that everything what you want to achieve in life, you can achieve in life. That's also the reason why I'm quite out and loud and about on my social media network, so I can be approachable for the people, because I know how important it is for people to have someone they can look up to and can approach easily. Because information is easy to get, but some people, even though it's easy, they find it difficult to get <laughs> to that easy information, if you get what I mean. And right now, everyone is on social media. So I think it's very good to use that platform to at least encourage people to do something. But at the same time, I'm always showing people that I have a huge work ethic. So they will also remember me for the guy who get things done, but the guy with a huge work ethic. That's how they're gonna link it. So once they see me doing my stuff, going on holidays, providing for my family, you know, doing investments, they automatically will link it, what they see I'm doing, traveling, making sacrifices, you know, being away from my family. Hours, 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 hours of work. So that's a very important thing and aspect, how I really profit myself. My name is Danny Balagoon, and you've just heard and seen the wonders that got me today here.